Good morning, Denise Dryden. I'm here in Clay Ellum. Oh, doesn't like my section. <laughs> I've got sound issues, I got everything. So I'm at Clay Ellum, which is on the east side of the Snoqualmie Pass because I'm on my way to Montana. I'm gonna go do some family workshop work and then go spend Thanksgiving with my daughter. So I thought I would kick off the first of four series on like what do we do when we have really sensitive people or we're really sensitive right and we're going into the holidays oh my god right we're going into the holidays so today we're going to call it boots on the ground we came up with this term when i was talking with the transformational presence uh, leadership group and then i've been playing with it i've talked to silent um generations you know those world war ii um early uh older generations i've talked to millennials and boots on the ground means um, in the most historical to establish presence. You know, like when your boots are on the ground, you're holding a line, right? And it can be military, it can be defense oriented. Um, I look at it um, as it can also be grounded, right? Your feet are on the ground. It can be demonstration. It can be full numbers of presence. It can be the fact that I am physically here instead of on the phone talking to you. So boots on the ground means you're here. And I like this term because when we're going into these, hi Sarah, hi Cheryl, thanks for watching. Um, when we go into the holidays, right? And we have this sort of wobbling feeling where we're not really sure what's going on. Um, there are some things that I want you to consider, especially when you have highly sensitive children teenagers, young adults, and you're sort of their navigator. You're the one who's always holding their feet on the ground, holding them, sort of helping them navigate what's going on, what's not going on, right? So there are going to be four examples in, a, well, that I came up with. There's probably a whole lot more of times when um, our sensitive kiddo is going to want to like sort of lean into you and need you. Um, the first is when something really scary happens. Whether it's a terrifying movie, whether it's sounds in the house, whether it's something that's going on globally, when something scary happens, they're gonna sort of go like, what was that? What do I do with that, right? And that's when we have to be present. Um, family events <laughs> like Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, all of these holidays that sort of come together in squash, especially in the Western culture. Um, to add to that, funerals. Um, hospitalizations, things like that where family comes together. And the reason I specifically want to talk about family is that there's this, like, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Family, you know, is going to have some triggers. Um, the third thing is change. Change and transition. Divorce, moving, um, home from being a preschooler into school, changing from elementary, middle school, high school, relocating. All of these things are going to be huge. So um, changes, and then when we get overwhelmed or lost, something that sort of taps us on the shoulder, stirs us up, and we start to wobble around. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it was really Sorry, cute. What? No, it's fine. It's awesome. Um, things when, when, when life isn't working really well, and you don't know what to do, and you sort of need to get your anchor. And that happens anywhere, anytime with sensitives, as we know, right? So when we get triggered, this is what happens. Um, we go into family situations, we go into trauma, we go into change, and there's overwhelm going on, which is too much coming in too fast. And then we're looking around at our navigators, and our navigators are triggered, right? So what happens when they're triggered? Things that the sensitives can experience is that all of a sudden mom turns into this ridiculous people pleaser. So people pleasing, placating, you know, overindulging people because they want to make sure that they're taken care of and, and the child gets lost. Avoidance. Um, whether it's a mom or a dad or a grandparent or a brother or a sister, it's like, no way, I'm out. I'm not doing this. You can't pay me to sit at that table and, and talk. So I'm just going to avoid it. I'm going to go in the back room. I'm going to watch football during Thanksgiving. I'm going to um, really, really dislike this. And I get that. You know, it's just too much, too overwhelming. They're going to disappear. Um, the other one is disconnecting, which is different than, than disappearing. 
it's literally going through the motions, right? And doing all of the um, participation, but not really there. Not even remembering anything, not participating, not showing up. Um, reactivity. You know, what happens when we have little triggers between siblings, triggers between parents, triggers between, you know, everybody getting together and who does the meal and who doesn't do the meal and who got the best of this and competition and we know how all of this works. Defensiveness, anger, bickering. Um, I think the hardest for a sensitive is passive aggression. When, you know, you can see these little zingers going in all over the table and you're like, we spent hundreds of dollars getting on an airplane to fly here to have this family event and there's these zingers going across the table and no one looks like they even like each other. <laughs> and all of these start to happen. So what happens when the, all of this starts to happen, right? How many times can I say happen? Is um, they, we need to make sure that a sensitive has, um, that they know that they're in overwhelm and that they need to manage that that there's a neutral place where they can retreat that's quiet, that's, that doesn't have as much chaos going on. They need to be able to ask for help. They need to ask for time. They need to ask for a hug. They need to ask for love. And you need to be available. And they need to be able to, or we, as even if we're sensitive, need to be able to ask permission to say, like, this is, I need to do something really different. This isn't working for me. So, the reason I call this boots on the ground is when we're parenting, a child or when we're taking children that are sensitive or when we're taking ourselves who are sensitive into these really high tricky triggered events when family gathers together because sometimes it's just not always as wonderful as we want it to be right that's when we have to sink in we have to put our boots on the ground and we have to be that solid anchor especially if we're parenting so boots on the ground needs tolerance openness acceptance it's staying in discovery like I have no idea what's gonna happen here but we're gonna create it as it goes along goes along and I know that I've got the confidence and skills to do something really wonderful with this flexibility you know it adapt change hey this is all too much for the day so we're gonna do this for a little while and then we're gonna step back and go for a walk and spend some time outside we're gonna go back to the hotel we're gonna go do something that works right self-care first um, then you know step back in um, illuminate yourself let yourself be seen let yourself be seen as this wonderful sensitive and don't hide you know stand solid be present kind of like as, as a demonstrator I'm here I do things really differently than you do and let's see what happens this time so illuminate, let yourself be seen, be present. And I wanna close with this idea that there's the, I, yeah, I'm right about on time. I wanna close with this idea that there's the fourfold way. And I've talked about this in previous videos, which is show up, pay attention, right? Absolutely pay attention. Make sure that you're noticing what you're noticing, right? And make no expectations. I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know why things are going to happen, but we're going to be okay no matter what happens. And then speak your truth. Always speak your truth. So over these next four to six weeks, as we sort of crunch in and go into all of these expectations and overwhelming situations, be kind to yourself and know that um, this is the kind of stuff that I do. And if you need some help with it, let me know. Give me a call. <laughs> Give me a call. We'll talk on the phone and, and we'll find out what I can do to support you. So my name is Denise Dryden. You can find me on Denise Dryden Coaching. And I'm on my way back to Montana for a few days and then down to Idaho. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, as you can see, Pioneer Coffee, Clay Ellum, Rocket. They are really good people. If you're ever in this area, stop by. Take care. Bye-bye.